in any factory that you go, okay, you will be seeing this kind of problems that each factory faces. So customer receiving bad quality, very common, like uh, you will see like there are many factories uh, getting closed just because of this issue, because they were not able to identify what, what is wrong with their product or they imagine that, okay, when, when they did the inspection, they found out that all the products were of good quality. So they send the shipment. And when they send the shipment, when the sh it was received by the customer, the customers found the bad products. Customer gets pissed off and says that I reject your shipment. So when the shipment is rejected, it is a big loss to the factory. Then another situation can be quality requirements not understood well. Not understood well means the factory accepts to make a particular product, but it is not able to transfer the requirements of what kind of product needs to be made, what are the quality requirements, what are the quality specifications, what exactly are the customer comments, and what will customer accept, what the customer will not accept. So they are not able to transfer this information to the value stream. Value stream means if you see how the uh, manufacturing uh, or any organization or factories work, it's a particular department. Let's say in this case, uh, in apparel factories case, it's the merchant team, the merchandisers team who will be working as a product development team. Okay, so they will be working with the customers and then developing the products. But once the product is confirmed and finalized, so some there are some certain measurement criteria, okay, certain product criteria. So those criteria must be translated in the language that the people understand, people inside the factory understand, so that those con those numbers and those uh, terms are understood well by the people who will actually make the product. Okay, so many a times what happens, the information is not transferred clearly, correctly, or completely. So that's why quality requirements are not understood well. So this leads to quality problem, product or service quality, bad quality. Okay, so this is what happens. Then processes not designed to produce the right quality. So there are many a times there will be like uh, in many products. So they will not have a good process. Process in the sense, let's say uh, they, they have to make a particular design at the collar, but maybe the factory doesn't have the right machinery or the right skill to make the particular process. So throughout the production uh, duration, they are struggling to get the right quality. So the process itself is not designed to produce the right quality. Okay. Machines are not stable or reliable to produce right quantity or right quality. Okay. It means that this we also discussed in uh, TPM where the machines are faulty and whatever products you operate through that. So they comes out as bad quality. People not skilled or information not transferred correctly to subsequent processes. Maybe there was some information which was not transferred by the marking team to the cutting team or cutting team forgot to put a particular notch or something to the, uh, in the cut, cut parts, which were not when, when, when received by the swing lines, they forgot to put that particular uh, uh, dart there and they missed it. So it was found out at the AQL point. So now the entire garment has to uh, rip through and they have to do the dart again. So because of one mistake happening at a particular process, it leads to several other mistakes in all the subsequent processes. Then substandard raw materials. Okay. Incapable quality gates means the inspection uh, points, inspection checkpoints. So maybe inline checking, end line checking, uh, fabric checking, then trims checking, maybe AQL. So there are several inspection points where the quality inspection check is happening. Or maybe the source inspection, the operator itself is inspecting. So incapable means they are not capable enough to understand what needs to be checked, how it needs to be checked, whether the check-in has been done correctly or not. Then poor understanding and integration of quality. It means as a whole, the whole business, okay, all the processes, they do not understand quality as a whole. So they are just focusing on product quality, product quality, product quality, product quality, and they're forgetting all the other aspects. Okay, so if you understand here, and if you uh, remember 4M, man, machine, method, material. Yes. Then 
you can see go through these problem situations and you can clearly see that it is not always product quality the product quality is the result of four m's okay so this is what we will see in the later slides so if we try to understand the impact of poor quality now we understood that there are several factors that can lead to bad quality okay so if that happens that means impact of poor quality so we will have at certain situation when the defects are found by the customer it's not a good situation okay now if this is the situation then everything that could have been done by the factory now it has already reached to the customer and the customer is finding the defect so this is very 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 bad okay and it's a huge cost then the second scenario can be one drop one step low or the impact may low may be low when the defects are found at the last inspection process means the factory has done all the work so this is this is a dot line where this part is still under factory's control this is under factory's control this is outside this is external so it is the last process where the defect is being found now all the processes have been done so uh, packing has been done finishing has been done sewing has been done fusing has been done embroidery has been done cutting has been done everything has been done now they are finding a defect so this defect whatever it is it may be related to fusing so all the pro processes after this has to be redone okay there can be a third scenario when defects are found at the point of occurrence maybe the problem happened here and there is a quality gate here itself where they are able to check the problem so they found it very close to it no problem so they are able to mend it there is can be a fourth scenario where quality is built into the process and not inspected okay what it means is the machine itself is designed to produce the right quality if the machine is not functioning well the machine will stop and it will stop prevention of any bad product bad quality product so that is what we called as uh, call it as quality is built into the process okay this is also called as jidoka the second pillar which is called built in quality okay now there can be a last step which is saying that it is quality excellence culture so we will see what exactly is quality excellence culture now if you try to understand this these five scenarios you will see that the most expensive is this one two if you keep going in this direction then the least expensive is this one okay and then the growth mindset the mindset says that the problem should be controlled as early as possible okay so that is the quality excellence culture and how it is achieved means okay we say that the quality that the defect should be controlled at you know as as early as possible or the next way of thinking is why do we need to think about defect at, at all we have to think about making the right quality so how do we make sure that we make right quality instead of stopping a bad quality how do we make the right quality okay you see the change in the way of thinking so until here it is about so this two is about finding defect okay this is internally finding defect this is externally finding defect but here in this phase what we are talking about is why do we think about making defect we have to think about how to we make the right product so quality is built into the process and not inspected so we are very sure if our processes are right we will be making good quality products